me for today's nutrition coffee chat. Mm. And while you do so, click the subscription button below and the little notification bell so that you get everything you need to create healthy eating habits that stick. Ah, so yes, the brand new cookbook by Angela Lydon, Oh, She Glows. When I saw it, I jumped right away and grabbed it up. I've been a fan of hers for a long time. She's a way, way back uh, blogger, food blogger from the vegan community or plant-based community and uh, many cookbooks now also under her belt and an app and all sorts of things. But I knew when she had a new cookbook, I wanted to review it for you because, well, let's say that her previous cookbook that I reviewed for you here, and I'll include a link to that in the description box below. Um, it's been a really popular uh, video that people have enjoyed, but I've also really enjoyed the, a lot of the recipes from that cookbook. They've become go-tos for me, um, such as the endurance crackers. Oh, love that recipe. Such an easy one and such a much healthier, such a much healthier so much healthier than those highly processed crackers that you get in the store. So beautiful recipe. The kids also love it. And so I'll include a link to that cook that recipe below. What other recipes of Angela's Oshi Glow recipes are you a fan of? She has so many on her blog and in different cookbooks. I'd love for you to share your favorites in the comment box below. And so we can get some conversation flowing. Let's get each other, you know, uh, inspired <laughs> for some new things in the kitchen. I mean, it's been over a year that we've been cooking mostly at home with COVID. And so, hey, let's get some more inspiration. But anyways, enough about Angela's past recipes. Let's get into her new cookbook, Oh, She Glows. Well, you always want to know um, how the book is kind of layout wise. And so, yep, yeah, nice hard cover and beautiful paper stock, great feel for those my fellow tactile folks. And you always want to know, do the recipes have photos? And yes, each recipe has a beautiful photo. And uh, I mean, she is a blogger, so she knows you know, her photo food photography, fantastic, mouth-watering photos that help you pick what recipes you want to cook. So let's look at the layout. Here's our table of content. Well, as you can probably tell, oh, she glows for dinner, so it's going to be mostly dinner ideas. So go to mains, satisfying sides and small bites, meal-worthy salads, hearty soups and stews, treats and drinks, and then sauces, dressings, spices, and more. Let's get into the recipes that I trusted out for you. And yep, again, lots of recipes that I tested. So I always like to give a nice thorough testing before I share a review with you. Okay, so first one that I tried, portobello boats with rosemary, lentil, crumble, and balsamic apple glaze. This recipe I really quite enjoyed and something I've noticed through a number of her recipes now is that they are a little bit lower on the starches or the carbs. Now I'm not saying these are all low carb recipes, far from it, but I noticed that a bit higher focus on protein, a little bit less on the carbs, which I don't know, maybe it's because she's aging, <laughs> you know, but uh, as we get a little bit older, I do recommend higher protein, a little lower carb for us. And so I love that she's kind of producing more recipes in that vein. Uh, this was a super easy recipe that I quite liked. Um, something that I did notice and including in this recipe throughout the book um, is that I noticed that the portion sizes or the serving sizes were a little bit here and there. Uh, this one says serve six, um, assuming one portobello mushroom per person. Um, I needed two to feel satisfied, so, and I'm not the hugest eater, <laughs> the biggest portion eater. I'm probably somewhere kind of moderate, and so, yeah, I, I would kind of, yeah, with a grain of salt, use her serving sizes. And also that the recipe serving sizes weren't always consistent. So this one served six, so-called. Um, some of them served two, some of them served four. So just something to keep an eye open on when you're going through the cookbook. 
not necessarily a problem, but you don't want to be, you know, buying your ingredients and then starting the recipe and then all you get is like half of what you need to, to feed your family tonight. That's not a good one. So just keep an eye open as you go through the recipes here. Next one, bruschetta veggie burgers. Oh, this one was a huge hit in the household. Kiddos loved it. And I do have one kiddo who's a little bit pickier eater and he definitely doesn't like to kind of find surprises in his foods that's really not his thing and so i was a little nervous because this has sun-dried tomatoes and some other things kind of hiding in that patty that veggie patty um, but yeah he really loved it no problems here so that was a big win next one maple baked beans and greens yep this was a, a good one if you like the kind of classic canned uh, beans, then this is a great way to make it um, homemade and vegan, of course. Now, something that really, I have to say, annoyed me with most of the recipes in this cookbook, and this is a great example of it, is that she's really, really chatty up front. There's a lot of kind of description of kind of background and how she feels about things and that kind of in each recipe. And so for each, every single recipe, you have to flip the page to get all the recipe, like even a short one. This one only has six steps and they're short steps, but look, here's where it starts on the page, way on the bottom. So then you're flipping back and forth, back and forth when your hands are, you know, in the middle of cooking, you don't want to necessarily be touching your cookbook. I mean, I usually have like a plexiglass stand that I keep my recipe, my cookbook in when I'm cooking a recipe. Well, and that didn't work this time because I had to keep flipping back and forth. So I have to say, I found that annoying. Um, again, not insurmountable, but man, I wish you had just either chosen a different layout or been a little more succinct. <laughs> Okay, moving on though. Velvety Alfredo Mushroom and Chickpea Pot. Oh, delicious recipe. This is like warmth, comfort, hearty wintertime food. I absolutely loved it. I would say that it wasn't super Alfredo-y. So if you are not vegan, you eat omnivorously, and you know what Alfredo is, that's one of your favorite things, I would say that still give this recipe a try. It's delicious, but don't go in with an expectation of Alfredo. Okay, moving along. Speedy 8-Ingredient Pantry Doll. Yum, love uh, coconut and red lentils together, and hey, Anything speedy and with pantry staples, I'm a fan of. So that was a great one. Ooh, 20 minute sweet potato noodle bowl with sesame, cilantro, lime, and avocado. This was another huge, huge hit with the kiddos in my household. This got gobbled up like crazy. They've never had spiralized sweet potato before. In our household, we call it camote. And uh, yeah, absolutely huge hit with the kiddos. And so, hey, gotta love it when the kiddos are loving a bowl full of vegetables and beans. <laughs> okay, moving along. Sneaky protein-packed mashed potatoes. Again, another big, big hit. Um, and you really don't notice much of the uh, chickpeas in here. Nobody in the household guessed that there were chickpeas in here. I did spill the beans, yeah, pun intended. <laughs> While they were eating it, they, they love chickpeas anyways in this household. But uh, yeah, what a great way if you have a kiddo who is a little bit of a pickier eater, not eating a, many different protein rich foods, this would be a great recipe to try. Also, if you're looking to increase your protein, decrease your carbs, or even just decrease your the glycemic index or how blood sugar spiking your carbohydrate foods are, this is a great recipe to try because you still get, you know, that that comfort of mashed potatoes, but eh, you know, a little bit healthier version. Rustic roasted carrot with rusted roasted carrot and dill hummus. This hummus. Okay, I gotta give her a hands down. Best hummus I've ever had. Yep, and I mean, I've eaten a lot of hummus. <laughs> In my own cookbook, I included a beet hummus. Oh, this one beats it out, I have to say. 
uh, if the carrot and the dill just just lighten and make the hummus much more refreshing and just much less of like that full garlic bomb that hummus usually is. Now I like some garlic, don't get me wrong, but this was just more spring-like, light and flavorful. And I admit the kiddos nah, weren't huge fans of it, but I was happy to eat it up. Moving along, okay, charred broccoli quinoa salad with apple honey Dijon dressing. This is a flavor profile right up my alley. I found it to be delicious. Now I did add chickpeas to it because I like a bit more protein in a meal and at, if I'm doing this much work for a salad, I want it to be a full meal salad. So I just, I, she has some options of different uh, chickpea ideas. So. Her example is cayenne roasted chickpeas, which is a different recipe. I didn't even bother with that. I just opened a can, rinsed it, and, and added it in. And with the dressing here, it was more than enough flavor. Now, something that I do notice pretty much from her other cookbook before, other things on her blog, this cookbook as well, is that um, Angela has enjoys things sweeter than I do. I find a number of her recipes a little too sweet, and I didn't adjust them because I wanted to taste the recipes, you know, and to be, give, be able to give you feedback, you know, this, this review. Um, but I will definitely be making this recipe again. I quite liked the dressing, but I did find it too sweet. So I'll knock down the uh, maple syrup in this recipe. A few other recipes as well kind of had the same feeling, those portobello uh, mushroom caps uh, that from the very first recipe that I tried, same sort of thing. Tasty, but the uh, barbecue sauce was a little too sweet for me. I'll make that recipe again, but mm, just decrease the, I think that was maple syrup. I can't remember what the sweetener was in that recipe, but I'll definitely be knocking it back. Oh, but getting into sweet things. Here we go. Chewy double chocolate sunflower cookies. Oh, these were delicious. Now she has them here as an ice cream sandwich. I didn't make the non-dairy ice cream. I just served the cookies. Kiddos, myself, the adults in our household, yeah, this was a hands down favorite. If you like a really, really rich chocolatey cookie, like almost cookie bordering on like a brownie kind of rich chocolatiness, this is a great recipe for you. So, so good. <laughs> And then next, oh, I also tried her six ingredient chocolate peanut butter oat crumble squares, and they were also really good. Yeah, I have to say that um, Angela's snack and baking game has always been super, super strong. In fact, I used to find that those recipes were her absolute best and her other kind of entree and other recipes were still good but a definite step you know down um but now i would find i recommend in this this cookbook uh that really the other foods have kind of she's raised her game with the dinner recipes to be better just like her um her snacks and and, and dessert recipes just bringing it up to that same level without any downturn in those sweets and those snack recipes so so happy to see it. But those are all of the recipes that I tried in this cookbook. My overall recommendation, do I recommend Oshi Glows for dinner? Yes, yes I do. Great cookbook. If you're vegan or you're omnivorous but you're looking to include more plant-based meals, particularly kid-friendly ones, this is gonna be a great cookbook for you. And I'm going to recommend it though for people who are a little more comfortable in the kitchen. So if you're more comfortable in the kitchen, this is a great cookbook. And um, if you're more of a novice cook, you're still just kind of learning how to follow a recipe and get comfortable in the kitchen. I'm not going to recommend this one just because of that formatting thing where you have to flip the page back and forth, back and forth so many times as you're making the recipe. I just think that's going to be another source of stress that you don't need if you're just becoming comfortable in the kitchen. But for most of us who are comfortable in the kitchen, strong recommendation for this cookbook. If that sounds like you and you're going to go get it, pop on down to your local bookstore. If you do shop on Amazon, 
I'll ask that you please use the link that I'll include in the description box below this video because when you do use that to buy it on Amazon, uh, you share a little bit of income to me at no extra expense for you. And that's just a great way to support the videos here on this channel. Ah, if you liked today's video, let me know. Click the thumbs up button below. Ah, have a fantastic month. I'll see you here next month. Have a great time enjoying healthy eating. And hey, I've got a couple other cookbook reviews here for you that are plant-based cookbooks.